Okie dokie, we should be live now. So, hi! It's Rika here today to do a layout with Gesso. And I hope everything is okay. It's just checking in before I start, like doing the layout and doing doing anything else that you can see and hear me. Let's see if I can see any comments. At least there's a thumbs up, so I guess that's good. So hi, if you're joining in, thank you. And it's Reika Kovasin from Finland and we're doing a layout today, but mainly focusing on these three, or actually I'm just using white one, but naturally the same techniques apply to glare and black as well. Hi! Hi Alina! Hi Mari! So I guess everything is okay. Hi Becky! Hi Monique! I'm so happy you joined in today. Hi, South Africa! Wow! Kind of the opposite of the world from Finland. India! Moikka Mari! So, something like this we're going to do today. Unfortunately, Sharon can't be with us today, but Sharon from the design team is going to be here and help out. So if you have any questions, just post them. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat while I'm working, but if I miss anything, she'll give me a holla or answer the questions. And naturally, after the show, I always go through the comments and ask, uh, answer if there's anything that I missed. Hi, Tracy. Oh, Barcelona. It's a lovely city. I've been there once. We were the crazy Finns who went... Uh, like swimming when it was maybe f 17 degrees locals were wearing like winter kind of jackets and to us it was summer hi Martha hi Odette I have no idea what, what the time it is just a minute hi Katarzyna I'm sorry, I can't say your name probably right. Hi, Mia. Did I get a lot? Okay, one more, one minute still. Let's be punctual. So today we're playing with gessos. Hi, Nancy. And doing a layout. But if you're more into art journaling or any type of mixed media, naturally you can use the same steps to do a canvas or a card or anything. It's 21 hours. Okay, perfect. Thank you for letting me know. Now we can start. Hey, Helena. Yeah, I know. It's so great. Thank you for watching me all around the world. So, again, I'm starting now. If you have any questions, just send them in. I try to keep watching the comments section, but if I miss anything, I'll answer them after. So, yeah. Thanks again for joining. And today's topic is kind of Gesso 101, but I didn't want it to be just like telling about Gesso or something. I wanted to do something, so uh, I did this layout. And there's a couple of different ways to use Gesso in it. It's one of my, or the other of my dynamic duo, as I call them, as I think kind of the basic for mixed media is gesso and the other one is gel medium because those are like my go-to mediums both from the Finnebar line naturally so we're going to get back to this in a second because let's go through the different gessos there is in the Finnebar line these two are like best friends because they are heavy body which means they are thick and then the clear one, that's like a, 
maybe uh, little sister or something because that's just not heavy body it's regular so it's more fluid than these two I used this one also but these are maybe my go-to's I started with white gesso nowadays I love the black gesso what they all have in common they are primers so I'm going to show you the techniques with the white one like I said but here's a sample I made using the black one so the black one really makes colors shine and as, as it has black pigment it's usually even more covering so if you do something like this and they are well these are mostly metal but if you use something black or red or uh, and want to cover it with white hi Sharon uh, cover with white you might need a couple of layers but with black usually one is enough because then there's all sorts of things coming on top so this is kind of my black sample but the same goes you could just paint it with white as well so and well clear would be perfect if you are an art journaler and don't want to have a white surface for example if you're using a Finnabar album and you want to block the page especially these ones so any kind of ink or medium you're adding on top doesn't go through the paper then add gesso first as that's a primer so it uh, seals the paper and also gives a little bit of tooth for anything coming on top so if you want the true color to show through then naturally clear gesso is the answer because then you can see the original color underneath and not add anything of other color on top. It's white when it's still wet, but it tries clear. And like I said, this is more fluid than the other two. But let, let's get going already. Let me get these away. And let's put this one here. And then I'm working with Georgia Blues collection as it has lovely blue tones. Blue is my favorite color. So let's use the same paper as I did with the sample. It's this one. But as you can see there's a difference between this surface and this surface. If you have a paper like this it's oh sorry come on yeah now it focused it's quite busy so you might want to dull it down and the easy way to do it is uh, with a gesso wash and what that is it's just adding gesso on top because like I said if you want to total coverage with white one you might need a couple of layers because it's not translucent but it some of the patterns show true especially if you add it with a little bit of water the other option which I normally use because that doesn't make the paper so much like going into waves is a silicone brush because then you can really add a thin layer there's just so there but it's so thin that you can see the pattern somewhat through the paper but it kind of minimizes the harsh contrast so even with a relatively busy paper like this you can create an area where your focal point is going to be that's a bit like well it gives a better background because then you can add the contrast near the photo or near your focal point rather than it being all around the page so I'm just applying a thin layer of gesso to my paper you can go from edge to edge if you like but I like to have some kind of frame around so I'm leaving some of the pattern to the edges 
untouched. Again, you could use an old credit card or something like that as a way to you to apply the gesso. But to me, a silicone brush is like my number one go-to. And what the gesso layer, as it's a primer, it seals the paper. So when we go in with other mediums, like I said, with the art journal, then it doesn't soak through and it gives you some like more play time if you want to add watercolors on top or stamping and also makes it easier to erase if you do uh, something that you shouldn't have make a blob or or something if you don't like the white look it's too shabby chic for your your taste and you really want to pattern to see the whole way through again use, use clear just so as it dries clear it just seals the paper and then you're able to play with the mediums you have kind of more open time with them but this is kind of the trick number one a busy paper which you find that it's too much contrast just so on top especially white one. Naturally, if you add black gesso on top, then you have black paper. But the Prima or Finnebari gessos are heavy body, like I said, so they are good to stencil with as well. Naturally, you can use modeling paste, but if you're just like starting with mixed media and doesn't, or don't want to buy a lot of things at once, Gesso, to me, sorry, is the one of the first purchases. The less you go like over the stencil, the better. And it may leak a bit underneath as this is not as heavy as modeling paste. But as it's a background thing. I think, yeah, we're going to be fine with that. Now I'm moving the stencil a bit. Let's see if I can kind of continue. If you want that edge to be really crisp, then you should first dry that layer and then add another. Or leave a gap between and then fill it in later when the medium is cleared. Here in Finland it takes a little bit of time to dry. Normally gesso is quite like fast in drying, but it takes a little while here. If you are in a really like hot climate, it may be already dry. But what it's it, it is kind of an adhesive, more about it in a second. So whenever you're working with your brushes or stencils, put them in water or clean them immediately. Because if this dries, it dries to the stencil as well. And then you ruin all the little, little things. So I actually have a water bucket underneath the table because I'm not going to clean the stencil right now on the live. So I said it's an adhesive because it grabs to the surface rather than floats on top or goes into the fibers. Oh sorry. So anything that's really light, like you can adhere paper layers or gauze as I'm doing now or soon with just gesso. You don't need a special another medium for that. Naturally you could use gel medium but it's a bit of an overkill at this stage. So I cut a piece of a gauze and then I I'm tearing it to make it a bit more fluffy and random looking. So there's not the cut edge anywhere. 
well, let's adhere those two. So, as you can see, I put it just down to the page, and now I'm adding gesso on top, and it will adhere it. But I'm not um, using the gesso all the way through. I'm leaving some of the areas untreated, so that it still has the fluffiness of the gauze. But anything light, I, when I'm doing a collage type of thing with just paper and when I'm really feeling lazy, then I use clear gesso to adhere everything together rather than the soft body gels because then I already have the coating on top. To play it safe, yeah, gel would be the ideal solution, but sometimes I just want to have fun and really go with the flow and then I use the clear gesso. But naturally there's differences between different brands of gessos. I'm now talking about the Prima Marketing, the Finnabar ones, and they, even the clear one in this line, has a good grip so you can use it to adhere things, but not every brand has that. So, technique number two with gesso, adhere something. The same applies to clear or to black one. As it acrylic based, like most gessos nowadays are, it kind of grabs in and you can use that as your advantage. Then, I don't know if you rec recognize these, what's the kind of border thing I'm having going here. It's actually a little bit, <laughs> little bits of pencils. I got these from my friend Seiya. She was kind enough to send me these and I love them. I've been using them in canvas projects and I thought they would make a lovely detail. Hi from Brazil. Hello. Thank you for joining. And again, thank you everybody for joining now for this Facebook Live about, well, I'm doing a layout, but also babbling about gesso. So, I have these little pens from my friend. And these are, I haven't tried, but I think these are too heavy for the gesso to be handling the all the weight. So, let's see. I'm going to glue them in, but I'm just thinking about how to arrange them. My photo is going to be here, like with the other project I did, so no need to use the lovely little pencils underneath the photo, because they are going to be hidden afterwards. So let's just use them here where they can be actually seen. Hey, Haney! So if there's Finnish people watching, I'm going to babble of some Finnish now, sorry. Hei ja kiitokset kaikille, jotka on tullut kurkkimaan ihan suomen kielellä muutama sana. Eli gessosta hölpöttelen ja leiskaa tehdään tällä hetkellä, mutta samat tekniikathan tietenkin käy muihinkin noihin muotoihin, että jos tekee artiornalia tai kanvasta tai muuta. Mutta kessohan on ihana perus, medium. And back to English. <laughs> so now I'm using a regular craft glue to adhere the pencils to my base. You could use gel medium again, especially if you're working on a bigger project, canvas or such, then I would recommend gel medium. But to a layout, paper glue is okay. Hi Ullis! A couple of more. As I lift the pencils up from the gesso, I actually can feel a little bit of pull, so it actually would adhere 
at least somewhat these and as gesso is acrylic based so it's a bit elastic so even if I would bend the paper for example this one it will stay put even if I bend the paper it doesn't come loose so now we have the pens here and to make them match the overall color seem more even though I used blue pencils naturally if you would have red and green and blue then you would need a heavier layer but I actually added some gesso here to blend them to the background so that's something I'm going to do in various stages of the project because it's a perfect way to make your embellishments or your items match to any of your color scheme. If you only have, let's say, uh, yellow flowers and you're working on a red project, because if you add red on top of yellow, especially if it's a translucent color, then you end up with orange. That might look good. But if you want to have more of the same colors going on, then add a layer of gesso on top and then you can build your colors in and make, make your embellishments and items match to your project. So, as these are, like I said, already blue-ish, I'm thinking I'm happy with such a coverage it's just here and there. Some of the blue can be leaking through and a bit of the pattern. But if it, these would be like bright red, then I would actually paint them totally white because then they would clash with the overall color scheme. And then let me get my heat gun. Sorry, it was a bit far away. And sorry about the noise now. I'm trying not to like yell over this one. Do we have to water, let me put this away for a second, uh, do we have to water down the gesso? It's what you want with the gesso or what kind of gesso you're actually using. If you use Prima gesso, I'm using it straight from the jar. I don't water it down. It's about amount. For example, here you can still, still see the pattern showing through even though I didn't water the gesso down. But if you want it more fluid, for example, if you're working on a hard surface, uh, then it might pay, especially with the black one. That's usually my kind of go-to trick. I water down the black gesso and then just add it in the cracks. Let's say, let me get this one. For example, such a hard place or that teeny tiny place. Normally I would first paint the background black and then over on top but still there might be some hard places for you to reach uh, with gesso then if you water it down especially the black one I usually use that trick then it kind of hides the color difference even though it's not a full coverage like on top of the embellishments but it hides the difference pretty well I'm hoping I'm making sense, but naturally you can water it down, but it's all about the thickness of the layer and, well, how quickly you work. So, let's see, yeah, now these had enough time to dry. So the next thing I'm going to use is the watercolors. If you like watercolors, you probably know that 
they soak to the paper very quickly. So if you want more open time, again, if you're using uh, watercolor paper, they are meant to be wet. But if you're using it on top of craft, like uh, craft paper or current paper, then you have more open time to play with the color if you have a gesso layer underneath. And if you make a mess, let's say there's too much, I can't put too much color there, but if there's too much color someplace and there wouldn't be gesso, you probably wouldn't, won't, wouldn't be able to blend the color in. There would be a kind of blob of color in a place. But if you have the gesso underneath, you're able to kind of play around and hide the edges so that there's not big contrast in some place. Oh, and if you want to know, this is the Tropicals watercolor set I'm using from Prima. It's, well, as you can see, it's my favorite. It's a bit so used and the I use those all the time to mix colors, so they are a bit dirty, but never mind that, right? And what I'm doing now with the watercolor, I'm kind of adding a little bit to the design. Using it a bit to blend the edge between the pens and the background. And I can also add splashes. If you know some things I do, there's usually splashes. But again, the gesso gives me the opportunity, for example, these little pebbles, then I can erase them with a wet, wet brush or mix them. If it would be just plain paper, let me show you on this side, it would be absorbed more quickly. So even if I try, you can see those little dots there. So I can't move everything around, whether on top of, oh, sorry, <laughs> on top of just so I can even lift the color up. So if you're hesitant to use colors, for example, on your project, a clear layer of just so might be the trick. So you can try and then if you don't like it, you can kind of erase it. So let's do that. And again, sorry for the noise. If I wouldn't be like doing this live, I would probably come on, stay someplace there. Uh, I would probably let it dry for, for a little bit longer, but now I'm happy with that. So, uh, because you can actually, you're buying just so now, perfect. You can hear me over the dryer, perfect. Then I can actually talk because I think that it might be too loud, but perfect. Thank you for letting me know, Donna. So, um, what else are I going to say? Yeah, if you use a heat tool over gesso, you can actually boil it. So if you start to hear popping sound and little air bubbles start emerging, then you're boiling to gesso. It's creating a lovely, lovely texture if you want that. But if you want, sorry, let me try to focus. If you want a smooth layer, then boiling to gesso might not be the answer because then you have something like crocodile skin in, in the end. But another 
lovely technique if you want a texture like that. And then let's play with some ink. Yeah, I agree. Prima has the best products. Really. I really, really love them. Like, even if I wouldn't be uh, on the design team, I would use Prima Gesso. It's, it's the best. Really. I really love it. I'm now using one of the Finnabar newer stamps with the non-permanent Midnight Blue ink. Again, going around kind of the area where I'm going to put my photo and even going on top, as you can see, for the pencils. And let's move these. As you can see, there's a difference between this stamped place and this. Let me show you up close. So here is the sample project and here's what I'm doing now. This has much more crisper edge and it's because I didn't add water yet. To create that kind of a bit watercolor like I'm just adding, spraying water and again because there's the layer of gesso I'm able to kind of blend it, the texture of the stamps into the paper. Here's the other sample I did earlier where there is no gesso on this cardstock. I hope you can see. And even though it bleeds like it's supposed to, there's still you can still read. Again, which effect do you want? If you want this effect, no gesso. If you want it more like just hazy lines, let me try to get a good place, then add gesso underneath. Again, just a way to use gesso as it blocks the paper, stops it from absorbing the color immediately. Then let's add a horizontal element. This has, well, nothing to do with gesso, but I like to use, because these are kind of vertical element. And then we need something horizontal to keep the layout balanced. And now I'm attaching the string to my scissors. Not a good thing. This is just cotton thread yarn twine. I'm not sure what to call it in English. Povila nyöri naru joku juttu en näkä suomekkaa saa sanoa mikä tää on. And I took five lengths. So then let's. Hmm. Now they're twisting. Well, let's go with the flow. Let's use it like that on this project. And to adhere it, I'm using my sturdy, reliable stapler. Running from, from the other edge to the other edge, edge to edge. I hope my babbling makes sense. English is not my mother tongue. When I'm handling the layout, it really feels moist at the moment because there's a lot of wet mediums going on. So if you're working this later on, you could really dry it between the layers. Now I'm just hurrying up because you don't want me to show how I dry because you can do that. Then let's, now we have the twine here making a horizontal and then we can make the cluster for the photo. I'm using this photo now from my younger daughters 
birthday party. I don't have a photo printer at home, so I order my photos, but I edit them so they are a bit smaller than the normal 10 to 15 centimeters. That's two, no, come on, six times five, maybe? I have no clue. Just a moment, I'll ask my husband to count. Mikä on kymppi kertaa 15 kuvaa tuomis? Not that it matters, but the regular photo size anyway. So this one is going to be here. Let's add a lid for a teeny tiny second. And then I'm using these papers, for example. I love this one. They are from the Georgia Blues collection because you can use these individual strips. Let me just okay, get a paper scissors. Four times six, he says. Perfect. The photo size, the bigger one was four times six, and then this one is smaller. So when I'm doing paper layers, whether it being a card or layout or art journal, I don't measure. I just cut some random pieces of paper with the paper cutter because even though I use my scissors to cut the photo I'm useless of cutting straight edge as you can see there so I use my paper cutter to trim any papers and then maybe that those two still Usually I have some, like a big, bigger piece of paper, almost the size of the photo, which I can then use kind of the anchor layer or the layer underneath everything. And then I layer the papers on top. And I'm doing the composition in my hand. In my hand, on my hand, well, like this. You can see what I'm doing even though I can't say it. And again I'm building uh, verticals and horizontals with the little pieces of paper and try to balance things out. I'd really love to, that dark blue rose to be seen. <laughs> Joo, välillä on se hankalaa leikata leikkurillakin jopa suoraan, mutta yleensä siinä on se, että suurempi todennäköisesti ainakin meikäläisellä saada se suoraan kuin, kuin, kuin käsin. Susanna said that even with a paper cutter it's sometimes difficult to get a straight edge. And I agree, sometimes it is, but at least it's not way way that way. Hey Anna! Okay, now I have gesso chains on, on my photo, but that doesn't matter. Let's staple these first, because now I feel that everything starts to move. So as you can see, I'm building the layers away from the layout with the help of the actual photo. And when I'm happy how the papers are, or it feels that and they all start going around and round, then I use a stapler to etch that stem. And for the other one I also used a hidden journaling, but these this one can't be actually stapled. It's going to be there. Whoopsie daisy. So let's staple these. Because naturally if you staple that one with a little envelope, then you can't move it anymore. So you can't see the hidden journaling. Oh, no, I don't have double-sided tape. Well, use, let's use glue. And the actual 
little tag that I used or will be using for journaling is from, as you can see, H&M Home. So it's a tag. I'm terrible at throwing things away, which I could use in my projects, as you probably can see with these, an old paintbrush. Don't throw it away, put it on a canvas. But now to get this, because these are raised from the surface, we need to add something to raise the paper layers. So these are just pieces of cardboard box. I had a Polish friend speaking as you. Uh, I'm not from Poland. I'm actually from Finland. I've been told that I speak with like really varying, varying, well, I hope that's a word, accent because sometimes I speak with an Australian accent, some words, and some are British and some are English or like American English. But yeah, I'm, I'm from Finland. Let's add one layer more. If you don't like your layout to be really dimensional, don't use this kind of trick. Just adhere everything on top and then even using these kinds of pencil like embellishments might be too much. Sorry, I'm using my... Yep, using my short to clean the photo. So, now we have the photo here, we have the paper layers, but still some work to do. Okie dokie, let's just sew some embellishments. Same thing as with the pencils, but this time I'm doing a really white layer. And let's use these butterflies, a couple of them. Because if you are more into kind of a sweet, romantic look, you might find that these Finnabar butterflies are too much for you. They are really grungy looking and, well, grungy colored. But if you like the shape and if you like the butterflies, in comes the gesso again. Naturally, you can paint them black and fit to your more darker projects then. But you can also paint them white and totally transform them to fit your kind of romantic project. If you want them totally white, as you can see, the first layer it's white-ish not totally covering them. I like this look, but if you want them totally white, then use a couple of layers. And especially when you're applying gesso on top of metal or something that it doesn't have anything to soak into, it usually stays on, floats on top in, in a way on paper as well, but still there's more, more room for it to be absorbed than on top of metal. Then use not diluted or straight from the jar the gesso and with relatively dry brush. If you have, like you should have when you're playing with gesso, your brushes in a water jug. Then when you're painting on top of plastic, as this is, this is done with the molds and using hot glue on top of plastic or metal then dry your brush before moving on top of the embellishment because if you use too much water it dilutes the pigment which in this case is white but it also dilutes the binder with, which binds the color to the surface so if you dilute that too much then it starts to just pearl or not stick, 
the stir first and then well then it's harder because then you need a couple of layers just to get a coverage but what I've learned that the gesso also do, do sorry does on top of these because these are made from the heat glue hot glue so if I now dry them carefully the gesso actually prevents the shape from melting a little bit it it's not a miracle worker so the heat will affect the shape but you will have a little bit more time to dry and play than with no gesso layer for these let's do another coat whoops it kind of blocks the heat a little bit if you're doing a bigger project and want to use gesso as you're playing with different colors then you can actually adhere everything and then paint it with gesso but in a project like this it's easier to paint the embellishments on their own now let's we have these embellishments ready moving that and still up 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 so you can see I'm hiding the butterflies here we go and then the flowers because what would be a prima layout without any flowers if you want to know the product codes I'm using there's a blog post in my blog which holds all the materials with links to Primasite at the moment but for example you can find the gessos at scrapbook.com as well so here we go let's take some flowers and then think how to put them if I put something here, maybe another one here, then there, then the butterfly, it could be here, yes, then this little flower could be here, that there, and to balance things up, with that butterfly let's think if we could have this butterfly somewhere for example there now there's three bigger blooms so maybe that's enough then the tiny flowers I'm trying to avoid to add too much there so I can actually move the tag later on and not be stuck can't be stuck there but I do want something blue there still I just need to be really careful well now I glue that one yeah something like that then let's glue them in As you can see, I don't think that much when I'm doing the composition. It's just tap, tap, tap. It's kind of letting the project lead me. I'm just adding something and then working around it. So we'll get this thing done. bigger flower 
somewhat easily and to this I can use glue without no doubt but I'm trying to get the glue to that flower only on this side so I can still move the tag later on then the butterfly here we go then to mix the flowers so to say into the project and this is handy at least I think so because even though Prima flowers are beautiful, they are gorgeous, but usually I have a lot of going on with the background. I'm using kind of my own hand touch to add paints and different kind of elements to there. So the ready-made flowers may look that they need something. So adding a bit of gesso on them or then a hint of watercolor usually does the trick. Because then they don't look as straight from the packaging anymore. If this kind of contrast is too much, then just using the similar color of watercolor on top, or even adding a bit of water there, might do the trick that they look more part of the project than coming directly from the packaging you're kind of making them your own as well because the background you work that your own own individual style handprint it's shown there and what you can also do if you like use the kind of gesso wash on top of the papers as well again tying them to the background a bit more and what I did here, I actually added some gesso to the photo as well. Here the focal point is my daughter's inside a phone booth. So I could do that. I actually have some gesso on top of the photo already, but not maybe in the way I wanted. And why I'm using my hand is to dry the gesso. I'm doing kind of dry brushing. So there's a very little gesso on my brush. So I can make this kind of fade to the edges. If you want to kind of retouch your photos, add a bit of color, for example, on top. Again, there's the clear gesso. You can add a whole layer of gel, sorry, clear gesso on top and then color, for example. That would be a really cool thing to do if you're doing um, art gel, for example. Now, it's almost done. So, last details, no gesso anymore. Everything connected with gesso is done. I'm adding some stickers. As you can see, I really use the art uh, daily sentiments because they are now loose leaf. Let's actually use that your time because it's my daughter's birthday in this photo. Let's put it there. And then just a couple of crystals to finish the page. So if you want to hear or learn more about gesso, Finnabar has a really good information about all her mediums in her we website. So there you can see more. You can naturally ask if you want. Add a question here and I'll an answer later or if I spot it now I can answer it now. Mm, no, I think these are a bit too dark. I'm liking that one but what about that one? Yeah and then a third one maybe here. The teeny tiny one. 
or up here. Oops. Wow, well, butterfly is moving around. It wants to fly. Like that. I might add a few more stickers later on, but and add glue because this is really 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 moist at the moment but if you're doing this on your own then dry between the layers so because paper is most vulnerable most brittle when it's soaked when it's um, moist wet wet that's the word then drying between the layers is also handy because it serves your paper but if you have any questions just leave them to the comment section and thank you so much for coming. I want to also rem uh, or tell you about that there's a summer workshop coming in Mixed Up Creative Academy where I'm one of the teachers or tutors and it's all about how you can use mixed media and creative in your own mental health or to keep you going. So if that's something that interests you, I can add a link later on and there's a blog post in my blog so thank you so much for coming thank you Sharon for moderating and coming to help me and well thank you all so thank you for now and I'll see you in next month again bye